Hi, I'm Jan, and in this video we're going to go over Faster Objects, More Objects, or FOMO, a completely novel machine learning architecture by Edge Impulse to do real-time object detection, object tracking, and object counting on the smallest of devices. Now, microcontrollers can do some computer vision tasks already, like an Arduino Portenta H7, which has a Cortex-M7 microcontroller on it. But these computer vision tasks are relatively simple. It's stuff like, do I see an object in front of the camera? Yes or no, an image classification task. And that already brings lots of value. For example, do I see a person? Yes or no, very useful information. But more complex computer vision tasks could never be done by a microcontroller. Like, not just do I see a person, but how many people do I see? Or where in the frame is that person? So for these tasks, stuff that we call object detection, Today, you kind of need something as powerful as a Raspberry Pi 4. Um, that has actually four one gigahertz cores on it. Um, and even there, that is not kind of sort of not powerful enough. Like state-of-the-art object detection algorithms like MobileNet SSD or YOLO V5 can run about two to three frames a second on something like a Raspberry Pi 4. And that really limits kind of usability. So you sort of want a GPU or a special accelerator and that drives the cost of these devices significantly. Now, FOMO is here to change all of that. FOMO is a completely new, re-architected way of doing computer vision and has sort of the same kind of complexity as normal image classification models. So what does that bring? Well, first of all, FOMO is about 30 times faster than MobileNet SSD or YOLO V5. And that means you can do 60 frames a second object detection on a Raspberry Pi 4, which is truly amazing. But FOMO is also much smaller in terms of memory footprint. So FOMO can scale down to about 100 kilobytes in RAM. And that means that all kinds of microcontrollers, from relatively powerful ones like the Portenta, to very small ones like the new Arduino Nikla Vision Board, or even specialized DSPs, like here I have one from HiMax, can now run object detection in real time with about 10 to 15 frames a second, which is truly astonishing. and makes computer vision tasks a lot more useful. Um, in this video, we're going to go over building your first FOMO model, uh, collecting some data and labeling that using our AI-assisted labeling tools in Edge Impulse. And finally, we'll show you how you can deploy this to your device to add real-time object detection to any of your embedded devices today. So what do we need to build our first FOMO model? First of all, an account at Edge Impulse. It's free for developers. Just head to edgeimpulse.com and sign up. Then you'll be presented with this screen. Second, we need a device. So FOMO is compatible with a wide set of devices from a wide range of silicon vendors, including IMAX, Sony, Arduino, and Synaptix. But FOMO runs on any microcontroller or Linux device. So whatever you have, it will work. Um, if you have a fully supported dev board, you can get data from the device with our CLI tools, and that is also applicable to Linux devices. But we have a really capable device with lots of sensors in our pockets already and we can use that to collect data too, using our phone. So let's do that, and the next thing we need is an actual object that we want to track. So what do I have here? A beer. So let's place one here on my desk, and place another one. And let's first collect some data using my phone. So I'll head to data acquisition, click show options, and then show QR codes, which gives me a QR code that I can scan, no app required, now collect it, and my phone, one, and two. And that looks beautiful, two bottles of beer. So with a fully supported dev board, it's about as easy. You just go to a CLI, run Edge Impulse daemon, and in this case, my HiMax board just connects to the same project. One really cool thing is that we can have a live view of what the camera is seeing. And that is really important because this camera might be completely different than my phone's camera. And collecting data with the device that you're going to use for inference is really important to get good models. So here I can point at the beer bottles from this side and you see a bit of the studio. Click start sampling. And now I've collected some data from my actual physical dev board. Now to label this, I head to the labeling queue because here we need to tell where these bottles actually are. So one way is that I can just drag a bounding box around it, but that gets really tedious. So one cool trick that we have is that we can use a larger neural network, in this case YOLO v5, to help us with labeling. Here we just disable all the stuff that we don't care about. We tell that bottles are cool, but 
we call them beer in their data set, and then just click save. Then we do it again. And a third time with data from the HIMAX board. Save labels, and done. Now we've labeled our data set. And that's how easy it is. So for FOMO, you need about an initial kind of model you want to build, about 50 to 60 images. But of course, more is better. Um, it's time to go and design our impulse. The very first choice we need to make is what the image size is going to be. For small devices, microcontrollers for example, you probably want something like 96 by 96 as an input. For larger devices, the Raspberry Pi 4, for example, you can go bigger, 160 by 160. And naturally, the larger the image, the more information it can convey. And also, the larger the details are that we can actually get from, um, from the model. The way FOMO works is that it maps your input to a heat map. And each of the cells in the heat map activates to say, this is a beer or this is not a beer, in this case. Um, and that the ratio of input size to heat map is 8 to 1 in the first release of FOMO. So a 96 by 96 pixel input will yield a 12 by 12 heat map, and a 160 by 160, a 20 by 20 heat map. So if you need granularity more than that 20 by 20, or you need more detail or more objects, you can just scale the input resolution up. And FOMO is completely convolutional, so this works on any arbitrary input size. Um, then we scale down, in this case we just scale the, gray, the resolution to grayscale, or the image depth to grayscale. Um, we have our feature explorer, if you want to look more in depth in the type of data that you have in your data set. Every little dot here represents one sample in the data set. And then the magic happens in the object detection screen. So here we configure FOMO. There's a number of configurations today, and the size and the amount of RAM and the amount of compute required um, differs there. Here we've selected the MobileNet V2.1 based model, and we have a 0.35 one here. And in the near future, we're going to add smaller and larger models. So if you have a device that where the MobileNet V2.1 doesn't fit, you can scale down even more. So the model here actually runs, this is an estimate on this device, in about 87 milliseconds per inference, so 12, 13 frames a second, which is amazing considering this is, that this is just a DSP running at 400 megahertz. Um, we see a peak RAM usage of about 240 kilobytes, which is an insane compression down if you compare this to how much MobileNet SSD or YOLO V5 actually requires. Um, and we get really good accuracy, about 87% F1 score. Um, with a little bit of bleeding, sometimes we don't detect beer, but let's actually see how, how difficult that is, um, or how bad that is. So to test out this model without flushing it on device, we can go to live classification. Um, once again, we have our camera here, the IMAX one, and we can point that at these two bottles, click start sampling, and now we actually run the inference in Edge Impulse, so not on device yet. Um, what you see here is actually, it's seen a photo and it thinks there's two beers present here. Um, at the right location. One difference you might see is that these are not bounding boxes, but rather that we focus on the centroids of objects. And that is a really cool trick that we've used to make this stuff much, much smaller. We don't care about the exact size of the object, but rather where these objects are and how small or how, uh, or how many there are. And this is a really cool optimization, because this way we don't need the big regression model at the end that detects these bounding boxes. We can rather just focus on where these objects are. Um, and this model seems to work. So let's run this on device and see how well it translates to real-world usage. So to deploy the model, if you have a fully supported development board or a Linux-based board, you can do so from the deployment tab and just get a binary for that board straight away. Um, we just compile something down for you, you flush it on the board, and you can run your inference there. If you have a different board, or if you want to write your own firmware, you can download the C++ library. And that includes everything, the complete model, all the handling codes, our SDK, and hardware optimizations to run this on literally any dev board under the sun. So this comes with examples for Zephyr, Embed, Free RTOS, and anything in between, even down to bare metal. And where possible, we load hardware acceleration. So we have that available for Cortex-M, Cortex-A, Arc DSP, Special Accelerators, x86, and everything in between. Let's see how all this works on device. I have downloaded the binary for this board and flashed it already, and I can now run our CLI to see what the camera sees and the kind of conclusions that it draws. So let's go here. We now see the camera, we see the studio, and there's no beers inside. Now let's go change that.
There we go. That is a beer. And that is another beer. Now let's add something that is not a beer. And that's fine too. Coke is not a beer. So that's how easy it is to go and test this model out. And as you can actually see, this is running in real time. So this was running at 70 milliseconds per inference, about 14 to 15 frames a second running on a DSP. Really, really cool. Now naturally, just running that on device is not as interesting as actually integrating that into your own firmware. So we've made it really easy to do that. If you download the C++ library, we have examples for almost all dev for all the dev boards that we fully support and a wide variety of other dev boards. And the only thing you need to do is pass your frame buffer in and you get the location of objects out and, use the, and you can use that in your own application logic. For example, to drive an actuator or to send a message to the cloud. So here I've done that already. Um, in my loop, I loop over all the scene objects. And if I see a beer, we set last saw beer to zero. And if we've seen a beer, we actually print a picture, an ASCII art picture of something with beer. Let's test that actually out. So I've built and flashed this already to uh, this dev board. And I run this now with continuous mode. So at this point, we see no objects. Beer. And let's take the beer away. That's one. And there we go, no beer anymore. And beer. And that's how easy it is. With a couple of lines of code, you can actually add object detection to your existing embedded, uh, embedded system and just integrate it into your firmware. Um, so FOMO is available today, runs on a wide variety of dev boards. Um, it's compatible with Linux systems, with Cortex-M microcontrollers, but also with specialized DSPs like the one we have here. It's compatible with the OpenMV Cam 87 Plus and any other dev board that supports the OpenMV IDE. So if you want to start adding true computer vision to your devices, head to edgeimpulse.com slash FOMO to get started. And we can't wait to see what you'll build.